this hour, we are celebrating the power of the written word, and we've invited everyone in our house seats to help us out today as well. They have written messages to people important in their lives, and instead of their mailboxes, they are using our show. I love them all. Each year, sixth graders in Maplewood, New Jersey, take part in a unique experiment. They write letters to their future selves uh, that are signed and tucked away until their high school graduation. So cool. A new documentary called Dear Future Me explores their reactions when they finally open them six years later. It's pretty amazing. Take a look. Should I open it? I've been looking forward to this for literally six years, so. I knew I, I did put money in it. <laughs> I got 20 bucks. Okay, here it goes. Dear Aiden. Hey, future Jackie. Dear future Oriane. Dear Armand in the future. Remember me from sixth grade? It's you. It has been a long time and you probably forgot you even wrote this letter. Did we ever get a Chromebook? Say yes. Yes, we did get a Chromebook. Don't worry, we did. All right, everyone in our house seats got to see powerful moments from the documentary. We have the teacher behind this experiment joining us right now. Everybody, please welcome Rich Palmgren. Woo! Hello. Hello, sir. How are you doing? Okay, how are you? I am I'm super good. Um, you, you've been doing this for 25 years, so how did you come up with the idea? So when I first started teaching 30 years ago, um, my mentor teacher had done this project. And when I switched schools, he unfortunately suddenly passed away. Oh. And I thought, what better way to honor him than to continue the project myself moving forward? What do you think they get out of this? Well, I think it's really, um, for the sixth graders, it's about, you know, they're about to step into a new environment, you know, the middle school, the high school, and they're able to, um, you know, decide what they want to be when they grow up and set some goals for themselves. Mm. And the seniors, they get to look back and say, well, maybe that was an unrealistic goal, or maybe I need to readjust my goals. Or maybe the thing that bothered me back then isn't so important now, and I've moved past it as a person. Mm. So they really have a chance to um, look forward to a new existence uh, in adulthood and still keep that um, little sixth grader next to them as almost like a security and a reminder of who they were. That's so beautiful. Um, one of the teens, actually, the documentary features is Ori. Check this tape out. <sighs> like, it opened up a lot of things that I felt that I completely forgot about. I didn't like the way my nose looked. I didn't like my skin. I didn't like my body. I even told myself, I don't want to be black anymore. And I hated myself for it. And that's why probably she was so intense in that letter because she's like, I need you to change. But myself now is telling her definitely, like, no, like, you're perfect the way you are. Wow, we have Ori joining us, and I'm trying not to cry. Um, Ori, I mean, first of all, I have to tell you, it's always an amazing thing to me um, to see such a beautiful girl you know, be down on herself. It's so funny what we see about ourselves and what others and how others perceive us. Um, but what, what were you going through when you wrote that? It seemed kind of an intense time. Um, I hated the yeah. sixth grade, so I feel ya. Yeah, well, when I was in sixth grade, I was very insecure. Um, both of my parents actually come from the Ivory Coast in Africa. So I have a lot of, you know, African uh, physical traits, like my nose, and I had a very muscly physique in sixth grade. So I was very insecure about that, and I didn't feel like I fit in. I felt like, you know, um, I was an outsider, and um, I, I really internalized that, and it made me very insecure. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think, man, sixth grade is a hard year. Um, my mama was a teacher too, and it's, you never know. I remember her finding out sometimes with kids, like, man, they had no food at home or they'd have no clothes, or like, there would be things that she'd never knew was going on. And, the, and there's so many kids in the classroom and they all have their own, you know, relative kind of hurdles and situations happening in their, in their life. Um, but Ori, what did the letter do for you? Because I imagine, seeing you now and just hearing how you speak so eloquently and so strong, you're so bold. I imagine you. you look back and go, man, I'm proud of who I became. I was a little insecure then, <laughs> but I turned out all right, yeah. you know? 
I was actually very shocked because I came off as very, very aggressive and intense in my letter. I was like, you need to be driving the fanciest car. You need to be going to the Ivy League. You need to be like making the most money. Like you need to be like on top of everything just mm. because I was like, I never wanted to feel how I was feeling in sixth grade ever again. I wanted to make sure that I was in a better place and whatever ideas I thought that was gonna, you know, get me there, like going to a good school, you know, that's what I wanted to tell my future self. But I quickly realized that, you know, self-love is so much more important. I found, you know, my people, I found my style, I found my voice, I found who I was. And a lot of the things that I planned to happen never happened, but it was also in a good way, you know, like life isn't always the plan, the way that we plan it to be. Mm -hmm. um, and I also found that like, I'm still very silly and very goofy, you know, like in my letter, I was like, yeah, like YOLO, like it's a very like 2014 thing. And um, <laughs> so that I feel like that also stuck with me. <laughs> and I was like, you know, very goofy and very silly and smiley. So I was happy to see that too. That's all, Well, it looks like you're still a little bit of that, which I love, don't lose that. <laughs> Um, well, Rich, occasionally <laughs> kids never receive their letters, right? Yeah, sometimes the kid, uh, the students will, you know, address it incorrectly. Sometimes they'll move and not send me a new address. Um, there's all sorts of different situations that happen. But since I am the uh, return address on the envelopes, they come back to me. And I have a dead letter file where I um, keep the letters and just hold on to them. And I've got letters going all the way back to 1996 for kids I haven't been able to track down yet. Wow. Um, well, th that's crazy. I'm here with Rich Palmgren, a teacher who leads students in a unique writing experiment. In sixth grade, they write letters to their future selves, which they then open as high school seniors. It's the subject of a documentary called Dear Future Me. We just met Ori, one student featured in the documentary. Now I want to bring in another one of Rich's former students. He wrote his letter in 1997, but never got it until this week. Everybody, let's welcome Tommy! All right, so Tommy, this is crazy. So how did you finally get the letter? So it started in 97 when I was in Mr. Palmgren's class. And I got to tell you, my memories were that it was just the most fun, creative, um, and engaging class I've ever had. And I've taken that with me throughout the years. Uh, fast forward to my adult years, I think in the past five to 10 years, I've just been thinking about reaching out to Mr. Palmer and just thanking him for what he did and how he inspired me and how he continues to inspire me. Uh, so actually this year I, you know, got the courage to do that. And I looked them up in the directory and sent them an email and said exactly what I just did. Uh, so it was just a, it was such a beautiful thing. Um, and then of course, you know, a, a little bit later, he comes back to me and says, Hey, by the way, I've got this letter for you. And I said, what letter? Um, and it turns out that uh, two years after I attended his class, I moved away and uh, apparently never gave him the address. So um, here we are, I've got, I've got a letter in front of me and I'm really excited. What a really cool story, it's like a movie. Um, well, Tommy, you have the letter there, are you nervous to open it? I'm really nervous. I have no idea what uh, 11, 12 year old Tommy has uh, got to say, um, <laughs> but I'm excited to read it and, and hopefully some of it's come true and uh, you know, so yeah, looking forward to it. I'm wondering if there's like, you know, a little love interest. That's where my <laughs> brain goes. Um, okay, Tommy, go ahead and open it. All right, what's it say? Um, so I'll, re I'll read the first bit here. Dear me, you should be reading this letter in the year 2003. I'm a little bit late. Uh, I am writing to myself to update my memories of the past. Here are some points. My first girlfriend, her name is Melissa. In fifth and sixth grade, I had a crush on her. I am currently obsessed about Star Wars. That has not changed, like not one bit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I collect baseball cards. Uh, today is 6-16-97 and the time is 8.40 a.m. And reminder, find your baseball cards uh, if you're still not collecting them. Aww, that's so cute. Cause they're super important. Don't forget about them. Do you still collect baseball cards? I still collect baseball cards. I mean, very, very little, right? Because they don't print them anymore, but I still have a bunch of them hanging around. They're tucked away in the closet, of course, but they're, they're still here. Aww. So what, why don't you read more? Is there more? Yeah, absolutely. So it says, my life. Uh, dear journal, today I received my 1997 yearbook. The person who still holds uh, a place in the honor of being the girl I like is Melissa. I guess I really liked her. The honor! 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the honor of the place. I love you. Uh, I don't know why I'm totally obsessed about her. It's just that I am, you know? Right now, the Yankees are playing the Mets in a three-game interleague. The score is now 3-0. The Mets leading. That's very disappointing to read. Uh <laughs> <laughs> so, wait. I have one question that everyone wants to know, I'm sure. What happened to Melissa? Ironically, we are still friends. What? So... Yeah, yeah, we are. That's so cool. That's amazing. Well, right on. What is there any more? Yeah, there's a little bit more. So there's questions to me. Uh, one was crossed out, so I don't know. What, I don't know what that happened there. Um, I guess I, I uh, decided not to. Are you in a relationship? Yes, I'm married, um, and I have uh, two children and one on the way. Oh, uh, congratulations! Take... Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Did you ever take Melissa to prom? No, I uh, moved away before that could happen. So, so that's a no. So what surprises you from everything of what you're reading? I think it's just what I was interested in. Um, and I think the other thing is surprising is how much I was obsessed with my, my, my past girlfriend, I guess. Um, yeah. But I think just seeing a little bit of insight in terms of who I was and what was important to me as, as a youngster uh, really obviously showed in, in my letter to myself. Yeah, yeah, make sure your wife doesn't see this episode. That's all I'm saying, bro. Um, so I'm just <laughs> kidding. Um, so tell me, if you could speak to the kid who wrote that, what, what would you say? I think I think I would just say that everything's going to be all right. Uh, as an 11, 12-year-old, you just worry so much about what you're going to be, who you're going to, you know, who you're going to grow up to be and things like that. And I think I would just be, you know, reassuring to say, Everything's going to be all right, you know, and I think if you continue to do what's right when people aren't looking, um, you know, you're going to you're going to make it in life. I love that message. I think that's a beautiful thing is like to be, you know, the best version of yourself, even when people aren't looking, you know, because we can all put it on, you know, but it's when you're not looking. That's a that's a beautiful sentiment.